giving you a voice and making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. First Updates Now, FTC is produced in partnership with the Orange Alliance. Now FTC is a platform to keep up to date on live and archive first tech challenge events and team stats at theorangealliance.org. And by viewers like you. We need your help to keep fun at loud, live, and independent. Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. You can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe. Hello, and welcome to FTC Recap, Road to the Suspended Houston Championship. This group of recaps is all about covering events in regions that would have fed to the Houston Championship, as displayed by the first championship map. Reporting for FTC Recap, I'm a boss. If you have any questions that you would like read during the show, please tag at First Updates Now and type your question into chat. I'm Miss Ingrid. I'm Egan. I'm Bryant. And I'm Brooks. If you're watching live at twitch.tv slash first updates now, we've got another giveaway this evening that will take place between this show and the FTC Top 25. So let's bring on our producer, Tyler, to talk about our second giveaway. Yep, we're going to be uh, giving away um, from our friends at Rev Robotics and Ultra Planetary Gearbox Kit an HD hex motor. Uh, so you might be saying, hey, what does all that actually mean? I know, you know, I say that usually, but uh, no, this is uh, super cool for you to try out on your robots. Uh, guys, if you've been, uh, uh, of course, have some downtime right now, this is the time to experiment and do some cool things uh, with your robot. So we hope that you check it out. Uh, I hope that you check out Rev. Uh, you know, I, I just heard from Greg uh, that they're working from home, but they're working hard to make sure that uh, they can still process orders, get things going as well, too. So uh, kudos to them and Rev Robotics for keeping their employees strong, keeping them healthy, uh, but still getting the job done. So go check out uh, Rev Robotics. We'll put a link in the chat if you're interested in learning a little bit more. And then to win this, there'll be a keyword uh, for you to type in later on during the show. And all you got to do is do that. And don't forget our subs. Get five times luck to win. Join Foundation. Get a bunch of cool benefits, including a private channel our Discord, where all giveaways that are not claimed go to you first. Uh, so make sure you check that out. Plus, you get to skip those uh, uh, Twitch ads that come up as a pre-roll. And we can't stop that, unfortunately. But if you subscribe, then you don't get to see those anymore. So that's pretty rad as well, too. Uh, so thanks a lot, everybody. And can't wait to have a great show. We'll give this away later on. All right, on to our first set of states. So tonight we'll be starting with Florida. Florida had 60 teams at its state championship on February 28th and 29th, and there were two divisions, the Lawrence and Scott division, uh, the Lawrence and Scott division. 3101 Boombots and 14805 Cir Circuit Squirrels uh, ended up the only undefeated teams after six qualification matches in Scott, and 163091 the Rising Ninjas were the only undefeated team in the Lawrence division. After alliance selections, the Lawrence division had a mouthwatering second alliance with 6433 neutrinos as captain after graciously declining the first uh first alliance's request 4997 masquerade as their first pick and 7321 charlotte surge as their second this alliance came out on top for the lawrence division with a high score of 123 and semifinal two match number two and on the other side in the scott division we had my team team 3101 boombots choose maelstrom uh team 3846 and team 3830 violet fusion uh this alliance ended up stacking 12 cap in semis one for 136 points and another 120 points in semis two. I do believe this makes Florida the fourth state in, in uh, Skystone this season uh, with teams that have done 12 cap, which is pretty impressive. Data Force was the first to do it with uh, in two different states, actually. And then Small Stem and 8221 double cap 12 a, a couple of weeks ago how now uh in the scott finals however due to some unfortunate disconnects and auto slip ups on 3101's part uh they ended up losing becoming the scott finals alliance captain but all kudos to the scott uh winning alliance captain with 97 79 pie eaters 12 600 hadron knights and 2845 duct tape the third alliance taking home the uh the dub for scott honestly i think their double cap mechanism was just insane to watch and uh we have the video up right now you guys can see it like uh at the end of the match and end game they were just really really consistent with this double cap mechanism and i believe uh they double capped an eight and a nine stack making it equivalent points to an 11 cap so i thought that was just a really effective use of their robots this uh this year what do you guys think that's impressive i wonder mm -hmm. if they actually did the math to get that figured out to where hey we don't need to build 11 we can only build eight and we can mm -hmm. double cap it 
Yeah, I'm not sure. I never really asked them, but, you know, just afterwards, I was just looking into it and researching it a little bit. And, yeah, I mean, it was a whopping 65 points just from the stones and the double capping. Um, oh, in the final matches, however, Lawrence did come out victorious, making quick work of the Scott division. They did 10 and 9 cap in the two finals matches they played. And after awards, we had eight teams advancing to the would have been Houston World Championship with the uh, with. Hadron Knights taking home the Inspire, 64-33 Neutrinos, 49-97 uh, Masquerade, and 73-21 Charlotte Surge as the whole winning alliance. Then there was 38-88 Grease Lightning as Inspire 2, and 31-01 Boombots as Inspire 3. Finally, uh, Maelstrom, 38-46, was the Think Award winner, and 97-79 Paeters advanced, taking home uh, finalist alliance captain of the whole Florida State Championship. I think if uh, if the Houston Champs were to happen, this would have been a very strong state with really great feeders like Maelstrom and Charlotte Surge going through, as well as some strong stackers with Neutrinos, Boombots, and Hadron Knights. All right, on to our next state of Nevada. The Nevada Championship took place on February 21st, with 36 teams competing for slots again to Houston. After 54 qualification matches, there was only one undefeated team with 15 8 to 8 Highlander Robotics. However, there was an upset in playoffs with their alliance not taking home the winning alliance trophy, but rather the fourth seed alliance, composed of 16158 VC Silver Circuits, 11471 Codebusters, and 14194 Neocratic Nerds. Uh, this alliance actually went 4-0 all the way through playoffs, but they only had a high score of 99. So right now we have a video up of Finals 2, and this was the 99-point match. And I think what's really important to note is while neither alliance, or like while neither team on the alliance was able to stack uh, looks like more than too high. They made really, really efficient use of the auto, scoring 40 of the 99 points from that. What do you guys think about that? Yeah, I think auto definitely had a big uh, impact on this year's game, especially teams that could get more than two stones across. So I definitely think, yeah. especially at mm -hmm. early tournaments, it was really showing uh, like just how you could win a match almost basically just an auto. Yeah, I think uh, one thing, it was either Ashray or Ishan, they said, maybe it was Nathan, they said during like one of the past top 25s, they said auto will win you qualification matches, and it'll help greatly in playoffs, but teleops really what matters. I think this really goes to show that in uh, states that have like a little less developed teams, you know, teams that have like five or four stone autos, auto will still win you those well, those playoff matches. And really, like I think a, like a big part of Skystone this year was just how important it was getting that auto down right from the beginning so yeah uh, by the end of the night the uh, highest OPR was by the finalist alliance captain at 55.8 and the inspire award winners were 11 Five seven four incognito 5687 cyber mafia and 12194 read robotics g-force all right, on to the third state of the night, the infamous Utah. This year, I think the Utah Championship church stirred up quite a storm with 36 teams vying for just one advancement slot to the Houston State Championship. Here we had Team 14147, High Voltage Couch Bananas, interesting name, taking home the gold <laughs> gold, being the Inspire winners and winning Alliance captain after choosing fifth rank 12384 Checkmate. Uh, here's a video of their highest match, 123 points, with a three stone auto from Checkmate and an eight cap tower um i know like something that was like pretty like controversial like pretty surprising in the ftc community was checkmates message after the utah state championship like talking about like oh like how they like they wanted to like make a banner and things with like uh talking about like all the teams that helped through the season so they could qualify through i think it was idaho uh so they could qualify through like the last state championship what did you guys think about that yeah so definitely checkmate being so dominant this season mm -hmm. and like I feel that they deserve to go to Worlds because, I mean, they won yeah. a state championship. Next stop is obviously Worlds. And they also right. want to inspire through the season. So it's like they should be able to try to get themselves to Worlds by any means necessary, I guess. And they did it. They, they did go to Worlds. Right. I mean, personally, I would well, say, like, I think Checkmate yeah. has just been, like, a fantastic help this season. Like, right from the beginning, they put out that robot in three days that really just showed a ton of teams what a future great robot would look like. And just throughout the season, they've always been posting their CADs, always taking questions. And I think, like, they're really just, they are, like, a great team in the community trying to help everyone and just really trying to spread the message at first. So, I mean, I think what they did was honestly very impressive. And I'll be talking about Idaho a little bit more later, but they did end up advancing through Idaho, so I right. thought that was really right. good for them. Yeah. 
All right, uh, on to another really big state for the night, uh, California. So many Californian FTC teams ended their season with the NorCal Championship that ran March 7th through 8th. And here we had 56 teams competing uh, within the, both the Silicon and Gold divisions, which but which both had their own fierce competition. Ultimately, 12635 Curiosity Robotics came out on top in the gold division with 8404 Quicksilver as their first pick and 16236 Juice as their second pick. Uh, in the six, in the Silicon division, we had 14341 Hypercube and 8802 Negative Resistance uh, winning their division, setting the stage for competitive finals matches. Um, in the interdivision finals, both alliances operated similarly with a very effective feeder and stacker strategy, and we had 16 236 juice feeding stones extremely quickly leading to a blue lines victory in a finals one finals two brought a nail-biting match with 8404 quicksilver and 14341 uh, hypercube going stone for stone in their five and four stone autos respectively quicksilver was able to grab an important lead in auto when one of hyper uh, when one of hypercubes uh, stones actually fell off the foundation but in Teliot, uh, 16236 Juice and 15034 QLS mm -hmm. Middle Management. Uh, I guess that would be uh, 8802 and 14341 second pick zoomed across the field and fed 10 stones each for their alliance partners. Hypercube and Quicksilver, just like in auto, went stone for stone as they both completed 10 stone stacks. And I mean, in this match, you can see it was really just like just even like stone for stone exchanges throughout the whole match and it was just that one stone falling off an auto that decided it overall by the end it was a nerve-wracking finish for both alliances with the blue alliance edging out over the red alliance in a 139 to 135 what do you guys think about these matches yeah these, these matches were definitely very close and very high scoring uh Especially with like a lot of the high scoring matches, you'll see like one alliance was able to do a lot, but maybe because they were so strong, they kind of starved the other alliance. Right, but right. these were both alliances were just scoring super high scores, so I thought that was really cool. Yeah, I think that's a really good point. Like, what we often see in matches is, like, just an insanely high win margin. Uh, one thing I'm interested, though, is I know, like, a lot of teams have been using Adometry this season, of course. But last year, Quicksilver won the Houston Control Award for their use of the VU marks around the field. And I'm interested to see if uh, they're using them again this year for their extremely quick auto. If anybody in the chat knows anything about that, I would really, really be interested in knowing uh, how Quicksilver does their auto this year. All right, on to my last state of the night, Arizona. So Arizona was a bit earlier. Uh, it was in February 22nd with 48 teams uh, coming across. I believe it was open state. So here we had two divisions, the Grand Canyon division with 11212, the Clueless, 6929 Data Force, and 14814 MC2 dominating that division. And they had scores of 140 plus in three out of the five uh, semi or final matches they played, and over in the Saguaro division, the other one, the teams team sixteen two five eight Robo Raptors and sixteen two six five Enigma, as well as ten three six nine Robo Sapiens, proved themselves as a powerful force with four victories in their four playoff matches. However, in the inter interdivisional finals, it didn't take too long to determine the winner, as the Clueless Data Force and their partner MC two just collected convincing wins in their state finals. I mean. Data Force isn't anything new this year, guys. Like we've we've had fun interviews with them. We've talked a ton about them. What do you guys think? Yeah, I think Data Force, especially with the like how we had them on, they they're extremely knowledgeable and they've done they've done yeah. a lot of really good things in past seasons and this season. Um, especially with their auto early in the year, they um, they really set the stage of what auto kind of ended up being throughout the season. Right. And so yeah, I thought I thought they were great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know, like, one joke I make with uh, my friends on my team is, like, everybody's, like, everybody's, like, oh, like, auto claws are the move this year, but in my opinion, like, Data Force doesn't have an auto claw, like, they just have a magic claw, it's just so well programmed and just so fluid, it's, it's really impressive what they've done with it. All right, uh, does anybody in the chat have any comments, or do you guys want to talk about anything in the five states we've covered so far? All right. All right. Um, I think we can move on to Georgia. Uh, so Georgia teams finished up their seasons late last month at the state championship uh, with our largest event yet with 48 teams across the Pemberton and Kilrain divisions. Going into the competition, Kilrain already had a winning alliance bring between uh, 
10 to 19 batteries not included and 73 73 eco robotics carbon fiber uh, carbon fiber ended their qualification matches with a perfect match record and the spot is the first alliance captain picking batteries not included and um a surprise pick uh 12 seed 16 6 3 3 bots in black uh they managed to sweep through their division and were up against the second alliance of 43 27 uh 15173 and 12769 uh where they played they played finals one uh with BNI and Bots and Black uh managing a win of 104 to 88 although starting more than 20 points behind after the autonomous uh finals two saw BNI and Carbon Fiber in uh where things started off a little weird uh for batteries they missed their their block and auto uh they weren't able to deploy their intake um, so when they went to place their non-existent block onto the foundation, uh, they managed to hit carbon fiber on their way to park, which messed up their IMU and they started spinning out for the rest of auto. Uh, the refs were, you know, walking around trying to get them to, uh, stop, you know, you got to do the decision of, is it, is it a penalty if I stop or, or not? Um, but they started out with 14 points behind going into teleop. Uh, where carbon fibers feed and batteries really consistent and quick stacking uh, allow them to catch up with five points ahead going into the end game. Um, and they ended up with a seven stack cap and a foundation cap uh, with both robots parking. And um, to blue's six stack cap and double park in the end. The blue lines held and uh, pushed on to a match three. Uh, and Kilrain finals three. Um, batteries and carbon fiber swap places uh, because of BNI's auto early on. So carbon fiber was doing the auto this time. Uh, batteries only parked in auto. They managed to get both sky stones on the foundation but couldn't move it to the building site uh, where BNI continued stacking and ended with a cap six stack uh, and carbon fiber's capstone on the foundation yet again. Blue had a quick scare at the end, almost knocking over their tower, uh, but they were able to cap with the five stack. Uh, and that ended with batteries and carbon fiber uh, and bots and black winning and going to the uh, state or the final finals. Now over in the Pemberton division, uh, things were quite a bit closer in the finals. Um, so in the semis, the second alliance of 14393 Packer Robotics and 14943 Weber Rambots 6278 Roboglads faced the third alliance of 12995 Sash, 4100 Darbots, uh, whom we've talked about before, and 5898 Galactic Lions. Uh, so something interesting between the league champs and state competition now is Darbot switch from a traditional lift and horizontal slide system uh, to an inverse stacking system. So uh, they were only a few teams that, that did that this year. Uh, so the score initially came out in favor of the Blue Alliance. or The, the first match uh, saw Darbot's Alliance win, Second Alliance saw them win yet again, but a rescore uh, favored it to the other Alliance. And then match three started out with another close game, uh, but Packer hit the Alliance Skybridge, and due to the field not being set up quite right, uh, one of the PVC poles popped out of the side, and the Skybridge fell out, so the match got replayed. Um, oh and then the, the Red Alliance uh, ended up uh, losing that match, um, having Darbots and Sash move on to the finals. Um, so then in the final finals, Kilrain was the clear favorite sweeping through, uh, where in finals three, uh, it was one to one. They had a pretty crazy, crazy match there with batteries and Darbots both disconnecting mid-match. Um, uh, Darbots partner Sash, uh, on their way to the Skybridge, pushed them into the opposing depot. Uh, so that's obviously not good. Uh, trying to get less penalty points, they pushed them out, uh, which only got them even more. Uh, and then they oh, hit no. the Sky Bridge. <laughs> so oh, yeah. it was a really unfortunate match for them. Uh, and Carbon Fiber and BNI and Boston Black came through with the win 138 to 42. Uh, now in Wyoming, they had their state championship early February uh, with high caliber teams such as Data Force and Upper Creek competing. Uh, those two teams, along with 5026 Tesla Coils, were on the winning alliance, and they set the second highest penalty-free score for the season in semis match two, 
uh, with a 164-point world record. Uh, now, in Oregon, uh, they wrapped up their Super Qualifier weekends with powerful showings from many teams. Uh, over that, the Theed Super Qualifier, the powerhouse of 8045 Aphelion, put, out, put on a powerful showing, ranking fourth and joining the number one alliance, captained by 11703 Tacos in Cool Hat. <laughs> Uh, this alliance made it to the finals, where they were bested by the fourth seed, uh, number four seed consisting of 70, 67 12 Knights of the Round Table, 91 3 Mechanic Cougs, and 35 25 Avalanche Robotics. Uh, it's not too often that you see the fifth ranked team captain the fourth seed alliance to victory. Uh, and in addition, congrats to 11591 uh, Aimbot for winning the Inspire Award. Uh, now, in the Aldera Super Qualifier, Many teams put on a great show, and the number one seed, captained by 16433 Quasar, pulled their way to victory uh, with 15342 Ares winning Inspire. And then finally, uh, many eyes were on the Kachir, Kachiro <laughs> Super Qualifier due to the presence of perennial powerhouses of 12808 Revamped and 12599 Overcharged, uh, as well as an Oregon powerhouse of 8610 Tobertech. After hard-fought qualifying matches, revamped and overcharged were ranked one and two respectively and formed their alliance with team 14383 Formula R. This alliance swept through the elimination, scoring 144 and 137 points, the third and 11th highest scores in the world at the time. Uh, in addition, congrats to Revamp Robotics for having an undefeated record and for getting the gold, gold, double cling bling with the Inspire Award. Unfortunately, the Oregon State Championship, which, spent, which was set to happen last week, was canceled due to COVID-19. Uh, however, congratulations for the, to the nine teams who are selected to advance through super qualifiers to Worlds, if Worlds weren't canceled as well. Uh, so let's go ahead and begin our giveaway. So Tyler, if you could please tell us on how people could enter this fantastic giveaway. Yeah, we're actually, we're gonna draw for this, by the way, guys, between shows since we're running a little bit behind. Uh, but uh, Chad has spoken, and sure, why not? We'll do bingo for the keywords. So go ahead and type in bingo. I'm sure there's some funny reason behind it uh, that I don't understand. Uh, but with that said, bingo is the keyword. Go ahead and type that in. Starting now, if you typed in before, uh, we didn't start it yet, so you have to type it in now. Uh, so once again, that's for winning this. Subs get five times luck. Good luck, everybody, and uh, we'll wrap up here with our, our last region. Yeah, so uh, we'll go on here with Arkansas to start out. So uh, Arkansas had their state championship since the last recap, and there were two teams that were undefeated in qualification matches. These teams were 75-72 Lights On and Team 78-42 the Brown Coats. Uh, Lights On picked Team 9879 Root Negative 1 and Team 8373 Diva Force to be on their alliance, and the Brown Coats picked Team 10391 Lynx Robotics and teams 17179 Devilbots to be on their alliance. Uh, the number two seed, led by 7842 Browncoats, was able to come out on top, giving them an invitation to MTI. And then Team 9879 Root Negative 1 was able to win the Inspire Award, which got them an invite to what would have been the Houston World Championship. You'll see a little bit in the video here, Browncoats Robot on the Red Alliance. And uh, they, they really... Um, were strong at this competition with their consistent two stone auto and then consistent like seven to eight stacks. And that, that consistency is really what won them the tournament. They didn't have like the highest stacks of the day, but they, they were able to consistently stack at good levels and that's what really won it for them. Um, so next I'll move on to Alabama, which had um, a lot of the same teams that Arkansas had because both are open regions. So, um, at the Alabama State Championship, we had a seven-way tie for the first seed with seven teams being four and one. Um, so wow. this led to, yeah, mm -hmm. I know. So this led to tiebreaker points actually playing a very big factor in the rankings. And so okay. Team 9879 ended up being the first seed at the Alabama State Championship. And they then selected 7842, the Browncoats, to be on their alliance. And Team 12652, the Flying Fish. Uh, the Browncoats played both of the matches at the Alabama State Championship for both the semifinals and finals. And then this victory for this alliance earned Root Negative 1 a spot at MTI. And then 7842 won the Inspire Award, which gave them a spot to Houston. So these two teams, actually between these two events, got tickets. Both got tickets to MTI and both got tickets to Houston. <laughs> it would have been canceled. So it's definitely a very good week for those teams. 
Um, we can see uh, brown coats are about a little bit more um, from the Alabama State Championship in this video. Uh, and so, yeah, so th that was definitely a good week for those teams. Uh, does anyone have any comments about how they think maybe consistency has been playing into this game? Yeah, I mean, I think in years past consistency, everybody's saying, like, consistency is key. And, I mean, this year with the risk factor, it's even bigger uh, of a part, in my in my opinion. Like, you, you're you always going to want to go with a team that just has never dropped a stack over a team that, yeah, sure, maybe they can do, like, 9 to 10, but, you know, more often than not, they'll drop the, they'll drop the tower. And I think that, that's just, if uh, like, going into MTI, CRI, and, like, all these off-season events, it's just going to be a huge factor in determining alliances. Okay, so now we can uh, move on to Texas. So Texas has, a, uh, I think, five total regions. And so we have uh, we have results for three of those regions. And so there, there are the north, south, east, west regions. And then I also believe, um, and then there's the Austin Metro League. And so in the north region, we had team 9511 low voltage, uh, captain the winning alliance, accompanied by 7172 technical difficulties, who had the third highest OPR in the south. And team 13916 Retrobots. Uh, this alliance is able to do a tin cap with with four stone auto for high scores of 130 plus. Uh, the Inspire winners at the North Texas Championship were team 6566 Circuit Breakers and team 7172 Technical Difficulties, uh, coming in second. And 6832 Iron Rain taking home third Inspire. And thank you for the correction. The chat is Central Texas. And so then at the Central Texas uh, State Championship, uh, Viperbots had, all of the Viperbots teams had quite a showing with Viperbots Quad X taking home first Inspire, Viperbots Hydra taking second Inspire, and Viperbots Oris Boris taking third Inspire. The winning alliance contained Team 6990 Static Void, who chose 6210 Viperbots Strike and 11155 Clash of Coders. And then at the East Texas Championship, we had Team 8080 Ironclad, Captain the Winning Alliance, followed by Team 8668 Should Be Fine, and Team 9839 Engineers of Olympus. Uh, this is a video of the highest match of the day at 127, done by none other than 8080 Ironclad and 17747 Rambotics. As we can see, 8080 had a pretty consistent three-stone auto and ended the match with a nine-capped tower. Next, we'll move on to uh, New Mexico. So New Mexico had their state championship since the last recap, and Team 16265 Enigma had a very strong performance in qualification matches, finishing out undefeated with a 60-point tiebreaker points, which really shows that they had a difficult schedule compared to some other state championships. They ended up picking Team 8081 Knights of the Lab Table and Team 10523 Dragons to be on their alliance. With high scores in both the semifinal and finals matches, this earned them the title of the winning alliance. And in addition, Team 10984 Beat Patrol was able to pick up the Inspire Award. So, uh, and then, so the next state we're going to go to is going to be um, Idaho. So, at the Idaho State Championship, this is where um, this is where uh, Checkmate had their second or their next tournament, and so they ended up being ranked second after qualifications with 5026 Tesla's coils being first. Um, Tesla's Coils picks the high voltage couch bananas and the boys to be on their alliance, while Checkmate <laughs> picked 10351 Nuclear Mines and 7024 Redneck Robotics 1 to be on their alliance. After um, both of the alliance w won their semifinal matches, it was time for them to play in the, the finals. Uh, Checkmate had a very strong uh, finals match and ended up winning the finals, which gave them which we've seen Checkmate has been one of the strongest teams this year. On the judging side of things, Checkmate was also very strong as they won the Inspire Award and Team 5026 got the second place Inspire. So this would have got Checkmate the invite to the Houston World Championship if it is still happening. And uh, finally, I'm going to go over one of our international regions, which is Alberta, Canada. Um, so at the 2020 Alberta Championship, Team 10015 SWATBOTS RED and Team 17163 BRABOT went undefeated. And the SWATBOTS picked 10544 Cyber Eagles and 16595 SWATBOTS BLACK to be on their alliance. 
In the second set of semifinals, the number three seed brought it to three matches and then one, moving them on to the finals. This alliance had 16596 Alberta Tech Alliance and 16544 Stratobots and 14021 SCHS Robotic Team. However, the number one seed was still able to hold strong in the finals and was able to win both of those matches. Team 10544, the Cyber Eagles, were also able to pick up the Inspire Award. So that's a, that's all I have. So if we'd like to move on to the next set of regions, uh, Miss Ingrid. All right. So Oklahoma had their regional championship on February 21st and 22nd with 39 teams in attendance. Uh, our first seeded alliance uh, was uh, captained by 5553 RoboComets with their first pick, 11354, the Midnight Ostrich Runners, and their second pick, 17081, Bison Bison. The second seeded alliance... Uh, their team captain was 4250, the lightsabers. And yes, they've had that name for an incredibly long time. And they dress up like Jedis. Um, with their first pick, 12535, Revolutionary Robotics. And their second pick, 11572, Mouse Spit. Each made decisive wins for their semifinals matches, neither allowing a third match. However, the finals matches did make it to a third match. So both finals one and two matches were rather equal aside from a few differences in which Otto track, uh, tacked on a few extra points for the winning alliance of that match. Uh, both made skyscrapers of seven and six and seven tiers with a single cap and had parking. So those two matches are pretty even. The third match for your finals determined the fate with a second seeded team victory. Otto was fairly evenly matched in points, but every stone delivered and placed in driver control made the difference first seated alliance delivered six stones eight stones were placed on the foundation but only four of them made a skyscraper with a single cap the second seated alliance delivered five stones six stones were placed on the foundation and every single one was placed just right to form a six-tier skyscraper with a single cap and then they added another cap on the foundation so organization and intention of stone placement was key to the success of this match um, so for the first time in many years, 4250 lightsabers, the second seated team, uh, second seated Alliance captain reclaimed a ticket to worlds along with, uh, the first place inspire award winner, 10641 atomic gears, who also made inspire award runner up two years in a row at Houston worlds. And we had our second place inspire and first place winning um, alliance partner 12535 Revolutionary Robotics. This was their this is a second year team that uh, started off in FLL and then graduated up to FTC. And then we had a surprise last minute additional ticket in Oklahoma. Uh, they gave a week and that our affiliate held out on us until the actual announcement. It was third place Inspire Award winner 8866 Cybernetics, who also went to Houston Worlds last year on third place Inspire. So moving on to Mississippi, um, they had their state championship on February 28th and 29th with 24 teams in attendance. The first seated Red Alliance captain, 8651, wait for it, with both of their picks, 8803 East Franklin Robotics and 30, uh, 13176 Sparkomatic Robotics and Digital Arts. The second seeded Blue Alliance captain, the 6302 Odyssey, uh, had both of their picks, 16151, are you serious? And 16489 Virtual North. Each made decisive wins for their semifinal matches, neither allowing to a third match. During the finals matches, the second seeded team averaged one auto navigation with the tendency to place all stones delivered during driver control on the foundation with a one tier skyscraper. The, their solid in-game included capping that skyscraper, moving the foundation, and parking both robots in the building site. However, the first seeded team upped their game by consistently delivering at least one stone in auto to place it on the foundation, which was moved out of the building site. During driver control, they placed every single stone to create one skyscraper, making it six tier for one match and a seven tier for another. Their in-game for the finals match really brought it home with a double cap on a six tier skyscraper, Foundation moved and double parking, defeating the second seeded alliance for the second and final time with a score total of 110 to 49. <laughs> you know, Ingrid, it always seems like the states you cover have the best names. Have the I know, with right? the funniest and best names. <laughs> Don't have a light. I'm sorry, guys. There's no light in this room. <laughs> All right. 
On to Brooks. All right. Yeah, in a car. <laughs> so, on February 29th, Louisiana wrapped up its state championship with a winning alliance of 9958 Red Fisher Box and 9768 Steel Eagles, with the stellar finalist alliance consisting of 13017 Event Horizon and 14374 Dark Matter. Red Fisher Box went undefeated throughout the event with a super consistent two Skystone Auto and good stacking with an integrated capstone. Their alliance partner 9768 Steel Eagles complemented the alliance very well by being an effective feeder, allowing Red Fisher Box to stack to the best of their ability. In this match, the final score was 92 to 52 for Red, with the Red Alliance having a two Sky Sonato, a six high cap tower with a double park, with the Blue Alliance unfortunately knocking down their four high tower. In finals two, Red Alliance Red Fish, uh, in finals two, Red Fisher Box was able to stack five and cap along with their auto and Doe Park, winning the event with a final score of 91-65. to 65. Also, congratulations to 14374 Dark Matter on their Inspire Award. For North Carolina, since our last show, they had their state championship. Team 5064 Aperture Science finished second after qualification matches and paired up with the first seed team Pyro Eagles. However, an auto failure in semi-match one caused them to lose a match, and Pyro Eagles and Circuit Shifters were defeated in the second semifinals by Plan B and Team Tundra Bolts. Finals saw some action as the second seed alliance of 16328 Trial and Terror, 7105 Swift Intergalactic Space Squirrels, and 9548 Highly Combustible played against the fourth seed, which consisted of teams 5309 Plan B, 7083 Team Tundra Bolts, and 15830 Swift Subaquatic Sea Sheep. Elimination matches had some very close scores, but even after second seed had a flip robot and disconnection issues, they were able to take the win. Something I noticed in Elims was every alliance had a stacker and a feeder robot instead of two stackers like we had seen in some other competitions this season. Sometimes the delivery bots would deliver stones too fast for them to stack, which actually left open stones for the opposing alliance to steal, as you can see in this video. What do you guys think about stealing opponent stones as a strategy? It's I legal. think it's just, a, yeah. I think it's just a fantastic, uh, fantastic, uh, strategic like move by teams. And you know, it's only like you're only losing one point for the delivery, but you're really taking away four points from the other team. So I think whenever it's possible for teams to do it, it's the best way. To, it's the best way to go. Definitely would agree with that. So moving down to South Carolina. So, at their state championship, the winning alliance had teams 16121, OMS Fred, 10021, the Red Legion, and 11444, Garnet Squadron. The first seed also had the highest non-penalty score of the day, with a score of 86 in semifinals match one. To finish up with South Carolina, team 8477, Rowling Robotics, won the Inspire Award. Finally, Missouri had its state championship in early March, with lots of fantastic teams. To start out, the S Division had great teams such as 7357, Team Titanium Tech, 3658, the Bosons, 10588, the Luxons, and 4587, the Red Hot Techie Peppers. Team 7357 should be a team that needs no introduction. They have been dominating all season long with one of the few consistent stacking autos in the world, with a fantastic tele app as well, regularly reaching eight nine stones plus a capstone. Team 3658 had a beautiful robot as well, with an impressive three stone auto. Together, they reached a non-penalty high score of 130 points and won their division, sending them to the event finals. The T division had some very impressive robots as well, with three 409 Astromex reaching the fourth highest OPR in the world at 100.8 points. They had a consistent three stone autonomous and seemed to have mastered the claw bot design by being insanely fast on the field, making some very high stacks. Finals at the event consisted of very high-level play, with the S-Division Alliance having a consistent two Skystone Auto and T-Division having a consistent three Stone Auto, with both making towers of 8 to 10 high. Both alliances ran into some issues, with the T-Division's tower being knocked over in their first match, and 7357 disconnecting in their second. However, in the end, S-Division won the event, with the final score of 126 to 101. Congratulations to 7357, 3658, and 11126 on the win, and Team 3409 Astromex on the Inspire Award. I think it's always interesting to see every year uh, Team Titanium Tech. Uh, they always go in like tunnel vision on, on one design. Like last year, uh, they sent a cup bot to Worlds uh, for Rover Ruckus. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. And it kind of just goes to show uh, you don't have to have necessarily the best design ever. 
Um, you know, a lot of people hate on scissor lifts and rightly so, um, but they've really <laughs> managed to make it as, as good as possible and optimize it and really just go hard in, in the driver practice to become a, a world-class team. Yeah, I remember last year watching them at Houston. I mean, we had a match against them too, and it was just like seeing them clear the crater every time of all the silver, silver minerals was just like amazing. And it was just, like it was pretty scary to watch, but it was also like very, very impressive. Yeah, beautifully simple robots, but definitely among the best executed. Yeah. All right, uh, so before we start the FTC Top 25, uh, we wanted to tell you guys again about our FTC Reveal Night. Uh, if you want to get your team seen by people all around the world, submit a reveal for Reveal Night by April 4th. It will be shown on the front page of Twitch for everyone to see. It's going to be huge. Submit your reveal at bit.ly slash FTC Reveal Night. So remember, submit that by April 4th, and there is a link in chat for you to go. Yeah, and uh, thank you everybody tonight for all your follows and subscriptions. Don't forget that you can subscribe for free if you or your parents have Amazon Prime. And we hope you enjoyed this episode of FTC Recap. If you want to stay connected with what Fun FTC is doing, follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram with the handle at FunFTC. Or join our Discord through the link in the chat. On behalf of myself, Egan, Brian, Ingrid, Brooks, and our producer Tyler working behind the scenes, I'd like to thank you all for tuning in tonight. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Want to see your Skystone robot on the front page of Twitch? Submit your end of the year reveal video to FTC Reveal Night by Saturday, April 4th to be shown on Wednesday, April 8th. Go to tinyurl.com forward slash Skystone Reveal to submit your video. Thanks for watching. If you want more fun content, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. You can also directly help support fun by visiting our Patreon at patreon.com forward slash first updates now or by subscribing at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Thanks to all of our co-executive producers on Patreon and tier two plus subscribers on Twitch keeping fun loud, live, and independent.